All right, boys and girls, I was down in Missouri last week on location to do a podcast with the guys from Unfiltered Outdoors, Blake Garrett and John Dittmer, a.k.a. Diddy. And we got to sit down with Jacques DeMoss from Shock Effect Products. And one of the things that uh, is really cool about this podcast is all the research and data that uh, Shock Effect basically records and takes in and they've been doing stuff deer uh, feed nutrition minerals on the pin ray side of deer forever and they're just kind of coming over to the free range side uh, and getting it out to the public and uh, you're just going to hear tons of stuff uh, based on science and just data and research it's a really interesting podcast that you probably have to listen to more than once but also want to tell you that the video portion of this podcast will be available on the unfiltered outdoor app so look for that very soon in the near future hope you guys enjoy the show All right, guys, we are live, and welcome to a uh, official unfiltered podcast session. And uh, guys, we got quite the crew here today with me. So, Blake, man, we're uh, excited to do this thing. Getting it launched. This is first run, so we're hopefully excited. everything goes. Exactly. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully. So, what's up, Johnny? Mr. Dittmer? Hey, up to me. Yeah. You use my full last name. Everything. I should be referred to as Diddy. Diddy. Diddy, but see, Dittmer's yes. okay. I only got one last name. Blake's got two first names. I do. Yep. Blake Garrett. That's a fact. That is very true. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then a special guest there on your right hand side. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Jack. Mr. Jack. So how are you doing today, Jack? I'm doing well. Thank y'all for having me here today. No problem, man. So give me a little let's get into you for a minute, but um we know that you do Shock Effect Feed and Supplements, correct? That's right. So, yeah, I am the owner of uh, Shock Effect uh, Probiotic Products. Um, we're based out of Springfield, Missouri. Uh, we've been uh, an industry leader in the captive deer and captive elk farming markets now for about a decade. And in the last about four years, we have made a push into bringing that nutritional science to the wild deer market to teach hunters and land managers how to grow out, attract, and hold their deer in the wild. Okay. So I would assume, obviously, health and wellness is a big deal in that captive side of things. So that, is, that is. Deer farmers are like mad scientists. They love to uh, play with their feed blends. They love to tweak certain levels of minerals and certain levels of nutrients, amino acids and whatnot. And so nutritional science is very important to them. But they've also been studying it for years and years and years. And for someone who's not very well versed with supplemental feeding or hasn't really studied a lot beyond just kind of putting out corn and minerals it can kind of be like drinking out of a fire hose so we try to break down the science and and make it understandable and make it easy to use so that you can buy the products and apply them in your individual hunting situation so when you think of some th something like that it starts with some sort of regimen i would assume so how do you guys break that down to where you kind of started with these are kind of the products and supplements we need Okay, the way we did it was, you know, obviously we've been successful on the wild deer and on the captive deer side for over a decade. When you really break it down, deer are deer, whether on regardless of what side of the fence they come from. What really matters is the way they feed. So if we can take the same nutritional science that we've been so successful with on the, on the captive side, all we have to do is address the levels and the manner in which we get it into the deer. So that's what we started on focusing on. Um, we offer... We offer a couple of flagship products, um, probiotic-based products that have blood flow promoters and uh, what, what's called basal dilators. And what they do is they're basically the growth component. And then we have a calcium supplement, which hardens and makes the antler denser, more resistant to break off. Uh, and you feed these together in a, in a feeding regimen that you can mix into the feed. You know, we're not a feed company. We're, we're strictly a supplement company. So you have to take our product, mix it into a good ration that you can put in your, your gravity feeders in, on, your, on your property, and you measure it out. It's highly concentrated. All of our products are fed at 10 pounds per ton. And so uh, we have products that are fed strictly during the antler growing process, you know, that, oh, that six-month period from, say, 
you know, mid to late February through mid end part of August. And then we have some products that are designed to be fed year round. And uh, our main product is called Antler Maximizer. And the way, it, the way you think about it is if you have two deer with identical genetics and you put one in a pen and you feed them just straight corn or just whatever browse they can find and you take the other identical deer and you put them on our feed products, obviously the one that's going to have the, the best genetics, the, the best diet, the best you know, supplementation is going to develop to be the best deer you can be. It's like taking two twins. And one of them is a couch potato that doesn't exercise, eats right. potato chips, drinks lots of beer, never goes to the gym. Then he's got the twin who hits the gym every day, taking the supplements, the amino acids, you know, really banging away at it. He is going to be the best twin he can be. And the same thing applies with the deer. It just wakes up and maximizes the genetics that your deer have. And the other part of that is the uh, calcium supplement. We use a pharmaceutical grade coral calcium, so it's crushed coral calcium mixed with some chelated minerals and you feed that to the deer and what it does is that deer go into kind of a a state of osteoporosis every year and they do it on their own deer after say august or september <clears throat> after he comes out of velvet they immediately go into um you know thinking about the rut and preparing for that part of the year well they're in a very depleted condition because their body had to put all that hard bone on top of their head and in the wild it's very unlikely, I mean, it's almost unheard of for a deer to have enough wild available supplement or nutrient in the, in the soil or in his environment to make up for what is in his antlers. So it has to come from somewhere, and it comes from their bones. Okay. They actually rob their own bone structure in their neck, the shoulder, some of the other like, large scapular bones. They rob nutrient and mineral out of that and calcium so they can put it up there. And then the idea being after the antler is fully developed and the velvet comes off they can just eat enough to make up for it but they don't they can't and then a lot of, depending on where you are in the country if you're up in the far north or northeast you know the winter is very hard on these animals and so they go through the roughest time of the year rut when they're not eating well and into the hard winter in a depleted condition so if you fast forward to say february or march and it's time to put on more antler then they're just digging a hole a little deeper. Already behind. Right. So that deer is never going to be what he really could be. So you you make that that calcium available to their diet. And I feed the calcium year round because they always need it. And the does can eat it, fawns can eat it. I mean, it benefits everybody just like it does humans. So would it have that that product available free choice in their diet, then they hit the antler growth cycle, you know, fully vested, you know, they have a full tank of of mineral in their body. And they can actually put that energy up into that horn. And if you have enough mineral and it doesn't, you know, if they, if they have enough levels to really produce that, then they will have an antler that's bigger, darker, denser, and heavier. And what that means for the deer farmer and, and, and actually the same for the hunter is that you're going to have less breakoffs. So I noticed you just said darker. So is that a flag for something health-wise? Yeah, the, the darker antler is a, is a sure visual indicator uh, that you have increased blood flow and increased migration of nutrients from the body into the antler. Because what you do is, the way our antler maximizer works is it, first and foremost, the, the probiotic in there increases the, the deer's food utilization. If, if a farm deer, you know, easy, if a farm deer, you know, could probably utilize anywhere between probably 60 and 80 percent of what they eat. On the wild deer, f because of the way they eat, and these little nibble here, nibble there, run over here, graze on acorns, come over here and eat bark, you know, th they have lower food utilization, so probably somewhere along the line of maybe 20, 30 percent. So if you can increase the amount that they process of what they eat, they're naturally going to be healthier. And then the probiotic also helps with their, their immune system, and so they maintain a better body condition year-round. You don't have the, the dips and valleys during the summer and the, and the fall. And the second part of it is the blood, the blood flow promoters and the, and the dilators. These go up into the antler, and they increase the diameter of the blood vessels in the antler. And so if you can get more blood, you can get more growth. And you have a bigger pipe to shove that through. And the increased blood flow carries with it the in increased concentrations of all that mineral and calcium in their bloodstream. So more of it gets deposited through a bigger pipe in the antler. Okay. And so the darker the darker coloration is just a sign that you have, you know, you've kind of peaked out on your, on your uh, vascularization. They're getting max blood flow, and with that comes the depositing of, of more, you know, mineral, more, you know, more uh, calcium into the antler. 
Gotcha. It's almost like gym talk. That's like a nitric oxide, guys. Lots of guys in the gym exactly. use that exactly for that reason. Exactly. So. And the same principle. Okay, same principle. Exactly. But, for, but for the same reason you use that, that, that product I was talking about, the antler maximizer, you use that from, like, say, February to August. And then in August you have to come off with that because at some point, you know, you have to turn off that mechanism. The, and by then you probably got all the bang for your buck anyway at that point. And so then you just start feeding, focusing on their – post antler you know off season health and so then you would switch to do just like a calcium and maybe just one of our other we have a, another product which is just the probiotic without the antler growth promoter and that way it keeps their body condition steady and static throughout the year because a lot of guys let's face it you know they only think about hunting you know right before antler you know the antlers are already on and a lot of guys even in the deer farming industry as soon as the antlers are fully grown they kind of forget about the rest of it and they'll take the, all the products away from these deer. Well, you you're just took away the best nutritional tool they had right before the hardest time of the year. Yeah, so, sure. so you never can, if you really care about these deer and you really want to try to attract them and hold them and grow them and really make them better, you really need to feed something on them year round. That's a good point. I think, uh, I mean, all of us kind of just generally in hunters, we, we think of this time of year and when those antlers come off, we sort of ne neglect them. So. I know you mentioned that earlier in the podcast that basically that they're going to lose some of that bone density, almost like it ages them, it seems to me. It does. Um, so how, mu how much of that have you guys researched that do they lose 20% of that bone structure or 5% every year or 2% or what is it and how does that? It's really hard to gauge. You know, we do a lot of uh, blood testing on our deer. We have, we have eight captive herds that we test on. And that then it's not just whitetail. We test whitetail, fallow, psyca, elk, red stag, and we test them in various regions throughout the country. Uh, we've actually, by this time next year, we'll have 12 test herds. And we actually draw blood from our herds throughout the year to see what their bodies need at different times. The quantifying the, the calcium loss is really, really difficult. It's something that really can only effectively be done post-mortem. You know, so it'd be hard for us to, sure. to monitor that. And a lot of it would be hard. It, it, a lot of it depends on if you're in a soil that has a lot of clay or a lot of sand or a lot of iron, or if you're in a part of the country that has, there are certain types of acorns that have really, really high calcium concentrations. And then you have areas like Arkansas and, and other parts that have really rocky soil and, and, you know, and really poor browse at certain times of the year. So in situations, situations like that, deer would probably lose a lot more because they're just gonna have to, they're gonna gauge you know, based on what their diet is. Right. So uh, certain parts of the country, it might be 2% or 5%. Okay. You know, other parts of the country, it could be significantly higher. Right. Just based on where you live and Just how much food. Just based on where yeah. you live. Sure. Right. Absolutely. So coming off of that, let's say we're going, it, you know, that in a deer's life, that cycle happens really fast. So we're, let's start at this February time frame now where we're kind of ramping back up. Their antlers are off or pretty close to being off and this process is about to start again. So how fast does that happen and what's going on in their body from that point on to where they're ramping back up, trying to put that weight back on, stuff's going in, the, getting ready to be antlers again. Um, how much more important is it to basically feed and supplement in that time of year? Oh, that's, that's the sweet zone, really, to be honest with you, because your deer is coming off the, the, roughest, the roughest time of the year it's had, winter, rut, you know, hunting pressure, what have you, you know, might have snow on the ground, really poor food choices, you know, it could, it, you know, they could be in a, a, you know, pretty depleted state. So it's, it, it has, it, their body processes are happening very quickly. Um, the pedicle where their antler meets their skull is starting to soften, uh, and then that will eventually fall off. Before that even falls off, the body has already started on the, the production for the next year, because that's what actually pushes the, the previous pedicle out. So, you know, the day you see that thing fall and you see blood trickling down their head, they've already actively got grown, you know, antler growth started. Okay. You, you just can't see it yet. So they need something in them then. Um, that's why I recommend feeding mineral year round. And because, it, you know, one, it's easy, it's cost effective. Um, and, you know, depending on what the game laws are in your, in your state, some, some states can feed year round, some states can't. But what I would recommend, if you can't feed year round, you come back on on mineral the very first day that it's legally capable to do it. Sure. Because they need that; they really need it bad. Uh, so that's just a minimum, you know. Really get that in there, and then, um, you know, like I said, I, I recommend feeding a calcium supplement year round. That helps them, like as I said before, that helps them you know, with that hard antler production. 
but then around the mid mid part of February when they start pushing nubs and then later into the first maybe the tail end of February first part of March you know they've already you know pushed out of the skin and got maybe an inch or two of nub coming up depending on where you are in the country and uh, and that's when you really start to need to think about your your long-term plan for the the six-month growing cycle uh, you can do it several different ways um, what I recommend is starting off at maybe a lower dose of our product maybe like say five pounds per ton uh, and what that does is it gets it in them it gets it started but it also stretches your dollar out a little bit and explain that product a little bit Jack. Wait, is it is it powder form so you that, mix it in with like a corn yeah what okay. I was about to tell you, you can, it, it, it there's a lot of flexibility um, and a lot of this is in response to what we learned in the deer industry everything we make every product we make uh, with the exception of our mineral comes in both a powder or a pellet and the reason we do that is we have a lot of customers that feed a textured blend with maybe like cracked corn and soybean you know, extruded soybeans and things like that and they use a binding agent molasses soybean oil sunflower oil something like that so it's kind of got a sweet feed or maybe a sticky texture to it in that situation a powder would be great because it's going to it's going to fold into your blend it's going to stick tight and it's really highly digestible uh, Lately, a lot of companies have been coming on with better quality pellet for deer. You know, before, the nutritional value of pellets were relatively low just because of the, the, the logistics of making a pellet. It's hard to put that much stuff in a pellet, and it still stays together, you know. Sure. But they, they've improved the technology, and these pellets are getting better as far as nutritional And they're standpoint. mostly all protein, right, right. in a pellet. Right, That's right. Okay. And uh, so you can, if you're going to do that, you can put a pellet with a pellet. And in that case, you know, a lot of times it's more cost-effective to do that. So we recently, in the last, say, four or five years, started making everything in pellet form as well. And so what you do is uh, you, can, you can measure it at home. I mean, you can mix it up in a mineral tub. You can do it in a little concrete mixer. Uh, we also will do it by mailing it directly to you, and you can take it to a feed mill. Or we can even – we have partnerships with mills all over the country. We can actually ship the product directly to the mill and give them the feeding instructions and they can just ribbon mix it into whatever you're blending sack it up and you take it home with you that's pretty easy yeah we try to make it as easy as possible some guys really want to tinker they love you know they play mad scientists at home they want five pounds of this and five pounds of that and you know and that's fine and, and i can send the product directly to you and, and show you how to do that but some guys want to it to be convenient and they just want to throw five or six bags in the back there side by side and go and i don't so know about you guys but that's me yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I need it convenient. Well, and that's so. it. And we, you know, if it's not easy to use, if it's complicated and too much of a hassle, it's not going to be done. It, it, you know, you can start off with the best intentions in the beginning of the year, uh, or say you're going to. But if it, if if we don't make it easy for you to use and make it effective, it's it's not. We're not doing our job. So sure. I know one thing that seems to be a big push of lately is you always hear about probiotics. So let's touch on that a little bit. The probiotic is important. I know there's been some hype about it, um, and there's a lot of information. There's a lot of disinformation about it. But really, the, the probiotic, what it does, is it just stimulates the body's digestive system. And, and what it goes down, boils down to is, like I said before, in a deer, you know, a multi-chambered ungulate animal with multiple stomachs and a rumen system, uh, you know, they, they chew food, hold it, distribute it to their various stomach systems, and then they, can, then they will digest it over time and so if you were to uh, take just say like straight feed let's say you feed a deer just straight corn they will turn that into their rumen they will digest a certain percentage of it and whatever percentage does not get utilized just gets pushed out the rear end okay with a probiotic added to that blend their body will extract much more of whatever you're feeding them corn soybean oats whatever it is they will extract a much higher percentage of that. So you're going to, you say you feed them 20 pounds of feed in a week to just alone, you know, they'll utilize maybe 30% of it. If you feed them 20 or 30 pounds of that stuff mixed with probiotic, they're going to get probably 50 or 60, maybe even 70% of that. So you're getting more bang for your buck. Your deer are going to be healthier and bigger because of it. Sure. And then the probiotic also needs what we call, we also load ours with a prebiotic, which is actually a, a it it primes their system for them to digest the probiotic so it actually kind of amplifies what's already amplifying eating so it okay. kind of just a little added boost there yeah i think i mean it's good to talk about every i think everybody's heard the word yeah they just don't know what it does and they don't yeah. know what it does so yeah, yeah in, it, but in simple terms it just makes them get more of what you're already feeding them and that's the goal yeah you, know, you want bigger deer you want healthier deer and you're also you know spending harder money to do this so you might as well be using a product that makes them digest and utilize more of what you're spending money on and just maximizing yeah. in input of whatever they're taking that's right 
for sure. And our product is a little different. There's no one else in the country that, that produces their products like we do. We have a proprietary, one-of-a-kind pelletizing machine. Uh, and the, the process in which we produce our powder as well. Most extruded products, um, the, the ex, you know, the extruding process, if you don't know anything about it, when they compress these mixtures and squeeze them into a pellet, it, because of the compression, it develops a lot of friction, a lot of heat. And many of the amino acids and the enzymes that are really vital to our product working will start to break down at about 115 degrees. So the extrusion process can easily generate 200, 220 plus. So I don't care if you have, you know, 100 pounds of whatever enzyme or probiotic, whatever, when you put it through that process, a much smaller percentage is actually coming out on the production side. Okay. Our product never hits more than 96 degrees. Okay. So 100% of what's coming in goes out. So our product is what we call a cold pellet, and uh, because it is or a cool pellet, I guess, but it's more effective because you're getting a much higher concentrated level of the active cultures, the yeast, the amino acids, the enzymes, whatever we're putting in, you're getting out. And that's what really activates the gut in the deer to process the food. So I know I got one thing. Right, so go. when we talk about that, I, I know um, like on the back of the bag, mm -hmm. like on, I'll say, Purina or anybody's pellet, um, do those numbers, are those numbers after that process or are those numbers before that process? Those numbers are before that process. They don't test what's on the outside. They can actually, and that's one of the problems with the truth and labeling laws in our country is that the, a lot of these companies have figured a way around them. And they'll say, you know, featuring probiotic X or whatever they want to call it. Yeah, it was in there when you ran it through the machine. That doesn't mean it's actually active on the backside. And I'm not saying they don't, I'm not saying these products, I mean, I'm not bad-mouthing anybody's right. product. And I'm not saying our product is better than anybody else's, you know. There's a lot of good products on the market, but no one makes their product like we do. Right. And so I think that's what sets us apart and makes us more effective. Yeah, I mean, that's something that's pretty interesting that's to you because you can look at it, you, know, you know, the bag of stuff. A lot of guys do it looking for even minerals that are in it and fatty content and things like that. Mm -hmm. But realistically with that process losing, because that's something I didn't know, you know, with it until talking to you about it. But that process with it losing that stuff and that you don't really know what no. you know what i mean what those levels are and that's a right. lot of guys make purchases off of those levels on the back of the bag sure no, and i so agree that's and, crazy and, one, and another thing that that lures a lot of hunters and a lot of consumers uh is the percentage of protein you know everyone focuses on well i got my blend or my pellet has you know 18 percent or 16 percent or 23 percent or whatever you know and the problem with that is you know protein is good don't get me wrong deer have to have the protein um, but fat is highly underrated. Rated. In our, yeah. It's highly underrated. Yeah. You know, they have to have a good source of soluble fat because it's a vehicle that actually gets these nutrients into their body. And, uh, and the problem with a pellet, and it's no, I mean, it's no fault of Purina or anyone else that makes a pellet. Um, logistics are you can only put five pounds of crap in a five pound bag. You know, they, they, once you get the pellet to a certain point of concentration, if you raise the fat level to too high of a percentage, it crumbles and falls apart. It won't extrude. And then you get a bag of powder. And so they are, you know, their hands are tied. They can only put so much and the pellets still stay together. And so the pellets are averaging somewhere, oh, I don't know, you look at brand to brand, they're averaging somewhere between four and maybe upwards of 6% fat. And to be honest with you, on the, on the captive deer side, the majority of deer farmers are pushing eight to 12% fat. Uh, because they just need that that soluble source to get those those you know those vi valuable nutrients into their body, and so you can do that on the wild deer side too. You're not I mean you're not limited. So that means they could go even more. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do it in the wild. It's not hard. Uh, you got two options. You can either use a, a a binder agent like soybean oil is hands down the best option, uh, and one of the reasons is it it only affects your peak in your nutritional value it only affects the fat content it doesn't change your protein count it doesn't throw off your your you know different types of um you know f various fats you know it, it just affects one level of fat and it's that soluble fat that acts as like i said the vehicle that gets it into it and the nice side effect is it, it acts as a binding agent so it holds your product together it smells good and it has a highly palatable taste so deer love it and if you can source it in your area uh you know, cost effectively. That is by far the easiest way to get your fat content up. Uh, to and like I said, it, it has a nice attractant effect to your feet as well. 
You know, guys have any problem with like uh, gravity feeders? I'm sure no problem. Going you, you through. Be, you, it, you really got to watch the the blending count. And I, you know, if anyone's interested, we can give them my email address after the podcast, and they can you know call me or send me an email. I can I can send you a copy of our blend and what we recommend. But um, you know, most feed mills uh, will you know are, are, they have a lot of experience with you know blending this, and you know we recommend somewhere between 40 and 60 pounds per ton, and that gives you a a, a feed that is you know enough to stick together but it's not wet and so if you know what you were ans- what you were asking i believe is you know if you get too wet you're going to gum up your, your nozzles right yeah absolutely and so you want something that'll hold together but not clump you know not not get greasy in your feeder right. and you can do it at home too i mean it, uh, we do it routinely on on, the, on my deer farm we we use an old concrete mixer mm-hmm. and i just kind of add it in and just kind of do it by feel until i feel like it's sticking well but not gooey and uh, and like I said, that you know, depending on certain part of the countries you live in, soybean oil can be sourced really, really easily. Uh, and there's other products you can get too. But but it it's an underlooked, underappreciated part of deer nutrition is is upping your fat level. Yeah, you don't hear a lot of guys talk about it at all. And uh, I have a friend that's really into deer nutrition, and we talk about it a little bit. But I don't think I've heard it in you guys maybe at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, like on the outdoor hunting side you no. don't ever hear of it no never ever. ever so it's very good stuff to know for sure oh yeah and, and i think part of the reason that you know supplemental feeding um you know has has not been really addressed more is that i think there's still a large constituent of hunters out there that were like well i've been throwing out corn you know right for hunt season that's what i'm going to continue doing it seems to work and i'm not going to change that mm-hmm. but with you know with the internet and with uh, hunting shows that focus on nutrition and things like that and I think it started to get out there. You know, I've been doing trade shows for about five years now in this industry, and, it, you know, I would ask people that would stop by the booth, you know, do you supplemental feed? And they would look at me like I had two heads, you know, supplemental feed, what is that, you know? Uh, and now I get people that come up and ask me really, really complicated, really, really uh, informed questions. And so it, I think it, the information is getting out there, and I think hunters are getting smarter uh, about getting these deer in and developing a feed culture to hold those deer, monitor them on camera, you know, monitor their body condition and really grow them and harvest them. So I think, I think that's changing. And I think that's, oh, yeah. I think I supplemental think. feeds are gonna become more the norm than the exception. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just starting to be honest. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I don't think you hear a lot of guys on a supplement regimen feed program. And uh, I think that we're almost, with all the hunting we do and all that stuff, it's almost a disservice to us oh, by absolutely. not doing it, for sure. So. It's good stuff to know. It's good stuff like this, the podcast, because that helps people educate people on why they should be doing it. And, uh, you know, it, it's almost like probably once you start, it's almost like our affection for trail cameras. You're mm-hmm. almost like, man, I can't wait to go out and get my feed and supplement out for these guys. Right, you know? right. Oh, I have so. several customers that will call <clears throat> and they'll get on a plan and in the first year, and they might have two feeders out. And the next year they've got five feeders out. You know, and the next year they got <laughs> nine feeders out and they got twice as many cameras, you know, and they're at their property more every weekend, you know, and they're there during the year when they didn't used to be. And so it, it kind of sucks them in to the management side of it, you know, and, and a lot of guys have reaped incredible rewards from using our products and, and having a feed program. I get, I get literally hundreds, if not thousands of trail cam photos a week from our customers. And these guys are like, look at this deer. This was him last year at this time. Look at this deer now. Look at it. This was this deer in April. You know, and, and they, they're eat up with it. And I love seeing it because it's a proof of concept for us. You know, these guys are blowing their deer up. They got good, healthy deer. They're seeing new deer they've never had before, you know, and that's all good stuff. And so I think, you know, like you said, it, it gets you, it gives you another thing to kind of get you into the sport. Oh, yeah. It gives another you, hobby with them. Yeah, more hobby. toys to play yeah, with. You know? Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm getting tired of talking here, but uh, might have to get a drink. Hurt? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so um, you know, proofs in the pudding um, with growing bigger deer. I mean, I think a lot of people, um, some people could care less if their deer was healthier. Um, they'd like to see a bigger bone, which is the same thing. Right. Um, what can a, a customer expect if they followed the program? If they started at the right time, say, just to say right when growing season starts sure. or maybe prior to that like we we just spoke of what could they expect um just i know each deer's different each region's different but just maybe on average what have you seen in the wild um that they can expect for say antler growth compared to 
maybe years prior right or um with it um versus without it sure no it's a good question we get that a lot and uh and can i add a question to that sure because <laughs> it goes you right had with enough it. talking thank you <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't i don't need to ask any more questions just add what that bmi does too because i'm sure it it obviously you know does something to the body mass as it does well, it so. does yeah we um no it's a really good question we we get that the two questions we get asked more than anything is the one you just asked and how do i avoid growing out these wonderful deer and my neighbor shooting them and i said you know if i had the answer to that, <laughs> that i would be at home counting ticket. my money yeah uh yeah that'd be like curing cancer but um to answer your question you know it again it varies you know depending on what your genetics are i mean if you got you know some hidden gem genetics i mean it's going to blow it'll wake them up if you've got just average genetics you're still going to get effect but you know based on the cameras uh studies that we're getting based on the 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 studies that we've done on wild deer the studies we've done on on you know on captive deer you know guys are routinely getting 18 to 35 inches of additional growth the very first year they're using i mean that's easy i mean that, we can do that all day long i got some guys that are growing you know 120 pushing 120s when they came into our program a couple of years ago and they're they're cracking the door on 200s now you know and now those deer have grown and they're maybe in that sweet spot that three or four year old sweet spot where they're obviously going to grow far more than they would have when they were two um, but they've kept the product on them they've kept the feed you know keeping the feed and you know to them and they're hitting that sweet spot and you know, i've got guys you know pushing you know pushing 200 i've got guys you know that have it, they were perfectly happy, happy taking 118s and turning them into 150s, you know. But it, it's going to happen. If you get, and that's why I always tell people, the product sells itself. You give me a fair shake. You use my product the way I tell you to use it. And you keep it on them consistently during the growth cycle. And they're real, the only limitation on that deer is going to be the genetics of what they have. Uh, but you can easily expect growth like that. that and we do that every that, day. That's, um, that's pretty incredible, yeah. honestly. I mean, you look at <laughs> shooting a 150-inch deer, that's big. Um, but he's a booner. <laughs> You know, yeah, if you fed had, him right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and absolutely. I skipped out on your question, too. That it, it'll also, you know, with the food utilization comes comes muscle growth and development. You know, they're they're going to be utilizing more they're of that gonna food. They're going to go hand in hand. It, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, their rack's going to grow, and their body's going to pace with it. You know, you know, you might have a, you know, that maybe in the two, you you know, maybe the, their antler will take off a little faster in their body. You might have a two-year-old that looks like a three-year-old until he, and a three-year-old that looks like a four-year-old. But then when he gets into that sweet spot, where they, you know, start to develop a little bit more uh, at the same rate than, you know, the neck and the body, you know, kind of takes off with it just because they're getting, you know, a better level of nutrition and right. more, more digestion. For sure. So, well, I think the, the most intriguing thing to me when we first started talking years ago about it is that once you get them on the probiotic, it's not a matter of, I mean, obviously, you know, throwing the antler enhancer to them, it helps it. But the probiotic part of it is that they're taking in that much more of everything they eat. So even if your neighbor's feeding – and he's going over the fence at night to eat on your neighbor. He's going to take in that much more yeah. of that food. And, and your food every, plot. Every, yeah, yeah, your food plot. And your acorns. Browns. Natural browns. And, I mean, the, you turn the deer into just a machine Anything he puts processing. in his mouth, he's going to extract more out of. Yeah, that's... And, and I failed to mention, too, and again, this is kind of on that, you know, the higher level. Some hunters will care about it and some won't. But it, again, it, it's important. It goes to the mechanism of how our product works. We are a micro-encapsulated product. And what that means is that we... We, it's almost like, uh, how can I describe it? It's like putting a little bubble around the molecules of our, of our product. And what that does, we actually coat them in several different thicknesses. And the reason we do that is a deer, like I said before, is a multi-chambered stomach, stomach undulate. And, and they kind of let their food ferment before they digest it. And so they have a complicated process. Food kind of moves back and forth between the stomach, and then it goes into their you know, their digestive tract and then through their urinary tract. And so what our product does, if, it, if we just had one coating, all of our product would be broken down by those digestive juices in their stomach and it would all be digested and absorbed in the first stomach. Well, it would be one big bulbous dose of our stuff, but it wouldn't have any sustained effect. So what we do is we actually coat it in several proprietary layers. And so some of it starts to get digested the minute they chew it and breaks down just with saliva as it goes down into the into their gut some of it breaks down in the first chamber stomach some of it breaks down later some of it breaks down extremely late into the digestive tract and they're actually digesting uh you know nutrition out of this stuff as they're excreting it out of their body mm -hmm. so what it does is that it you know let's say he eats just let's just say he sits down and eats five pounds of feet at one sitting 
if we only coated it in that one coating, they would only extract a certain amount of that corn. They would, you know, we would only increase the extraction of that corn a little bit. But because this breaks down and goes along with the food throughout the process, it's digesting it again and again and again and again at different layers. It's promoting that digestion. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason. And that's why they turn into a digestive machine. Mm -hmm. they, heat, they eat the feed with our product in it. Then they go off and eat some acorns. They go off and hit your neighbor's food plot or your mm -hmm. food plot. And every bit of what they're eating, it, that is getting more utilized because of that. So it helps you on, on every, every end of that deer. That's a good question. <laughs> he did, he's been studying <laughs> back on uh on antler size so a guy let's say um he's got uh he's got a, an eight point right and just a lot of genetics for four by four frames mm -hmm. and you feed him this stuff does that mean he's not going to be an eight point anymore he's going to turn into a 20 pointer or, or or what do you typically see do they throw trash because they have so much going upstairs or they, it depends again it, it, it just depends on their genetics mm -hmm. I, I've actually seen deer that were three and four years old uh, before they gave him our product he had always been a main clean you know clean main beam typical and the first year in our product threw stickers and kickers you know he had those in his genetics he just didn't have enough you know, he didn't have enough nutrition to make it happen right you know he was the couch potato you know and so I've seen deer uh you know only keep their exact same conformation and just just get bigger longer taller and wider you know guys get big old bases and big eye guards and their their points you know spread out and the individual tines get longer but their conformation stays exactly the same so really whatever their genetic code yeah. is if they have it somewhere in their body uh you know their their genomics are gonna you know result in them having trash and kickers and stickers this could bring it out. You know, you could turn non-typical into a typical, I mean, typical into a non-typical, but there's just no way of knowing. Okay. But the vast majority, to answer your question, based on our research and based on the, just observing the, the, the data that we get back from our customers, uh, the deer tend to just scale up how they are. You know, if he's a nice, clean eight point, then it, you know, he'll scale up that first year and just become a bigger, thicker, heavier eight point. And then maybe on the second year, boom, he'll start throwing off some additional points. But that's not always the case. We had a guy in Nebraska this year, uh, no, no, Pennsylvania this year, that he had a, a nice, I think he was a six-point, a solid three-by-three. Three. And then the next year, you know, he just you know, branched out and he was a ten-pointer out of nowhere, you know. And uh, so, again, it's just going to depend on, on what they have available to them and what their, their genetic programming is. That makes sense. Uh, one thing I found interesting, too, say um, <clears throat> after you've used this for a year and uh, there are sheds, you find them out in the field or whatnot, um, how much heavier they are and dense. So um, talk about um, the test you do with like the crush test on on uh, these horns once you pick them up. Right, yeah, and originally we developed that to benefit the deer farmer because deer in farms are in tight concentrations. They, they fight in the pens, they whip up on feeders, and then they live load them uh, into trailers for transport, you know, wherever they're going. And so you have a much, they're coming in contact with a lot harder sur man-made surfaces than, than deer in the wild do. And if you have a really nice, you know, shooter buck that you're growing out for a breeding operation or for, a, you know, a high fence shooting ranch or something like that, you know, those guys are getting paid by the inch. And if he were to break off a couple of tines, his value just went in the toilet, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why we developed this, because what this does, it gets up into the antler, it makes it denser, it makes it a lot harder and uh, a lot heavier. So that resists that break off. So in the wild, it's it's huge for the the wild hunter because you know they'll they'll whip up on trees and bushes and fence posts and stuff like that. But you know you you won't have near the the damage and the little point breaks and you know breaks when they palmate and things like that. You won't see that. And one of the ways we quantify that is every year when we either cut deer or we wait for their sheds, we will actually take different sections of the antler. Sometimes it's on the you know the main beam. Sometimes off you know. G1, G2, you know, whatever we're testing for, and then we'll test control deer, deer that didn't receive anything. Uh, and we even test our, we test our, uh, we're guilty, we, we actually go out and buy our uh, competitors' products, and we feed deer with our competitors' products to see how we stack up against them. And what we do is we do crush testing, and that's one way to test the hardness and the, the rigidity of the antler. And so, you know, we're, we're seeing wild deer crushing, you know, in that anywhere from four to 9,000 pound range, you know, 
we're seeing ours crush in anywhere between the 20 to 43,000 pound rush range. Wow. And, uh, and when you look at an antler, if you look at an antler in the wild, hunters don't get to see it very often because you guys, when you find sheds in the wild, you know, the, the pedicle cap has been pushed off and it's rough and it's where it broke off the skull. And, you know, a lot of deer farmers and, and the deer that we test, we actually cut the, you know, above the base. And so we actually get to see the, the internal core of, mm-hmm. of the antler. And a deer that has, you know, relatively poor uh, uh, nutrition will have, if you look on the inside where the blood flow used to be, you know, because the blood, the antler is really just a big blood vessel, you know, that ends up hardening. And it has a bunch of a little honeycomb vessels inside of it. And when you look, cut it, you'll see those vessels inside, you know. But on the deer that are been heavily fed on our, our calcium supplement, you know, a lot of times those are completely pinched off or they might just have little bitty pinholes, you know. So it is just, you know, just fully stocked and fully solid, full of mineral and calcium. And so because of that, I mean, you know, you go from a honeycomb look type, you know, antler to a, a solid, it almost looks like a piece of marble. And so it's a nice, heavy, you know, heavy, very tough uh, antler. And the taxidermists love it. We, uh, the taxidermists tell us all the time that they, they can actually put socketed base into our, to our antlers a lot red- more readily than they can on uh, some of these, you know, honeycomb ones that are harder to work with. Interesting. You should know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you ever done that before, John? I haven't, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've heard that a lot, though, with guys that, you know, manage their own farms to hunt on that, you know, oh, I really like this buck, but then every year in the rut he breaks off. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of neat to be able to um, improve that, uh, basically that longevity of that rack for that year. Oh yeah, no, oh, and and I love watching people at our trade show. That's one of the things we do. I'll take an antler from a control deer and an antler from a deer that's been fed heavily on our product, and just and they're basically you know identical genetics because we we test apples to apples. You know, I want the the, the consumer to to get real data. I don't want him. You know, I don't want to take a deer that's five years old and, and test him against a two-year-old and, and make my numbers look skewed. You know, we, we test real genetics against real genetics. And uh, so I take the antler from the non-fed deer to uh, the other deer and just let them pick them up and right there on the table. And it's, you know, oh, okay. And then they pick this one up. And it's like, oh, good Lord. I mean, it, it's a big difference. And that's going to result in real, you know, that's going to end up in real results in the field for you guys. One, man, one thing that I think is really neat is the fact that without kind of the opportunity you have to take this data, we, you don't really hear about it from stuff no. we get at the stores. Never. You know, any no. bag at the store, if you're five pounds of crap, there, <laughs> there's, there isn't the data behind it. So as a business, where did you guys kind of come up with that part of the business plan to say, you know what, we're, gonna, we're doing this research, let's start tracking and recording this data and, and show it to the public? Well, we, we actually, when it, it started with the development of our, of our pelletizing process, really, you know, because we knew we had something special. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that our probiotic blend is, you know, that much different than anyone else's probiotic blend, but I know we have a proprietary formula that utilizes things that, that other people don't. But our process is really the key. So we wanted to be able to, I didn't want to be the guy just putting something in a bag and tell you it was going to work. Um, I'm a numbers guy. I'm kind of a metrics guy. Uh, I actually come from a legal background. And so, uh, you know, my, my clients in the, in the type of law that I practice, you know, they, they wanted me to say, this is this percent better than this. You know, I can show you it is this much more money or this much more chance of, you know, prevailing in court than that. And so I got in a mindset that, that people want numbers because they want to be able to tell what they're getting, what they're buying, what they're going to get. And so we decided to, to start quantifying everything. We test young deer to see how they grow. We test old deer to see how they grow. Uh, we test, uh, we test our, you know, our competitors products. We crush test. Uh, we have, we test, you know, we have, you know, extreme quality control on our, on our temperature control on our product. We test the number of what we, we refer to as bugs in our pro- in our product. And that's all the microbes and the, and the probiotic count and the yeast bacteria and all that, you know, we have, we, we control everything. And so everything's based on the numbers. And so when we broke out onto the retail side of things, that was kind of a natural thing for us. You know, it, it, you know, I'm a consumer and I'm in, you know, Joe Blow bow shop and I got 40 bags of just junk that's on the, the shelf that's been endorsed by so-and-so or endorsed by so-and-so and it's all the same and it's all, you know, apple this and persimmon that, you know, you know, I wanted to be able to stand out and say, look, you know, you can use that if you want, but if you really want results, this is what this does, and this is how it does it. 
and so I can show you the data. And that's why I think we've been successful because guys know going in uh, what they can expect on the back side. Yeah, for well, sure. And the cool thing about it is even if they wanted to use whatever they wanted to use, they could still add your product to it and sure. still see the benefits. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah I mean, that's yeah, the neat is, thing. And like, and that's, really that's the beauty cool of our beauty product. In it. Yeah. We're, we're not a feed company. We're a supplement company. We're also not an attractant company. Right. The nice thing about our product, you can use them with both. Absolutely. You know? So, you, you know, we just make whatever you do choose to use better. Right. So. And I think, um, so we kind of talked to the guys who, I, I guess we should have the attention of the guys who are growing deer on their own farms. But what about the guys who maybe don't have as much time? I mean, you guys are offering now um, some concentrated items that they can add to whatever. I mean, That's talk right. about those. Because those guys, uh, there's a ton of those too. You know, oh, there's, there, a ton there's of more guys of those just, guys. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, and, and I didn't want to exclude you know, the average hunter, I didn't want to, you know, focus just on the guy with 10,000 acres, you know, there's far more guys with 60 acres or 180 acres, you know, or a shared, you know, plot with somebody else. And, uh, you know, and so there's a range of budgets, everybody, you know, comes in different colors and sizes. So by going to the trade shows, um, we got a lot of data from consumers. They're like, well, what about this? What about that? So my partner and I sat down and said, well, how can we address this? So we got together with our lab and our production facility and tested uh some some new products and came out with some new products that actually came out last year that have actually gained a lot of momentum um you know we make a mineral um uh, it was actually a component of of a feed that we use for for deer farmers and then people started asking for it to be produced separately and they started using it separately then that kind of that's actually what that product is what took us into the wild deer market in the first place so we make a really exceptional mineral but some guys came to us and said, look, I love your mineral. I've tried it. It works great. But my uncle or my hunt club or my grandfather, we've been using this blend that we make ourselves for years, and we really don't want to change. But we want to make our mineral better. What can we do? So we actually have a mineral booster, um, and it comes in a two-pound bag, and it'll actually treat 50 pounds of mineral. And so you can add this. It's a probiotic base. Add it to your mineral, and it'll just bring your mineral up a few notches up closer to, to the level of our mineral and it allows you to keep using the blend that you're comfortable with uh, so that was one thing and it's it, you know really you know low cost item you know easy you know, easy for any consumer uh, then the other side that we looked at was how can we develop a program to allow guys to feed all year long and get antler growth but not have to buy you know the big ticket maximizer and the sea cow and all that and for a guy that you know just will be honest with himself and say, look, I, I'll feed all year, but I'm just going to feed corn. And so we needed to address that. So we actually took um, two years and developed a product, and we call it Antler Tech. And it's a pellet, and it's basically a very, very highly concentrated version of some of our other flagship products. But it is formulated in a way to work with the nutritional values of corn. It works with the sugars and the starches in corn as the vehicle to get the nutrition into the deer. So you just put a pellet with corn, throw it in your feeder, keep it to them from February to August or whenever, however long you can. Uh, and uh, one uh, little bag, I think it's a two pound or four pound bag treats 250 pounds of feed or corn or whatever you want to put it with. And, uh, and we've gotten really good results with that. And so those are you know ways that guys with smaller budgets or guys with smaller land holdings can still get in and still get the results and not have to have so much you know invested in it from the feed side or the product side. Yeah, I think I, mean, I always go back to like the mineral game and I get a million questions on mineral here because we have some really, really good established mineral, like especially here in Missouri. It's just what our deer do. That's, I mean, right. that's how we track deer all year pretty much. Um, even now I can't feed, you know, because it's hunting season and, and I'm I'm killing deer, getting pictures of deer at least on mineral right now that are mature deer still, mm -hmm. you know. So I always get the question of it and it seems like the consumer always wants to see results, right? So that's why there's been some companies out there that are super, super high salt based minerals that aren't necessarily do anything for the deer. No. Um, but I think that, you know, that's there's a lot of hunters that love to see a giant hole in the ground, right? Right. And they would almost rather see that than, than maybe see the deer healthy. I don't know. But I they think... They would. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Yeah, I mean, probably. It's, it's, it is about... It's about attraction. It's and, you know, about I mean, that's getting it. photos on that trail camera. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, so I think... We don't know, preach enough health. Oh, absolutely. So. Well, and I think even, you know, with what you're doing with those products you're offering now with like the mineral booster, those guys can still use those same things mm -hmm. and you're still going to be beneficial to them also. You know what I mean? Oh, you're yeah. almost taking like a, 
like a meat and potatoes and then you're going to take, you know, and you're going to feed it with your dessert essentially where you get the full meal out of it by just adding that one product to it, which I think makes a lot of sense. I think there's a hole in the industry for that because you really, yeah, sure. it seems like you can either buy a super healthy, you know, blend of minerals, but doesn't have great attraction mm -hmm. or you can buy a really high attraction that has nothing good for the deer at right. all. And it seems that the market is one, one or the other. Yeah. There's absolutely. not a lot of middle ground. Yeah. Our mineral is actually a low sodium mineral. Uh, yeah. because we you know let's face it you know salt is a mineral and they do need it to some extent um but salt is also a limiter and so anybody in the audience that that runs cows knows you know a lot of guys will mix salt with their mineral when they put it out to cows to limit the amount that they actually eat at one sitting because when the cow reaches their limit of what they need for salt they'll turn off the feeder the same thing with deer you know deer are no different they'll hit that mineral lick or that or that mineral pile or scrape whatever you made with it and if it has a high concentration of salt when they get their fill of it i don't care how good a mineral it is they're done mm -hmm. and they will stop eating it yep. and so we that's one thing we got really lucky on is that we were able to develop a mineral that had very high palatability and attracting rate but still had low salt content yeah, absolutely and uh and in fact i i actually we have several customers that have, have started doing this i actually force feed mineral through my feeder to my deer in addition to my mineral sites just to give them additional that additional boost mm. and so i actually mix uh mineral in at the in my feed mill uh into my feed blend that i put into my feeders in addition to putting out you know mineral on the ground mm -hmm. so yeah and, that, and that's in mineral you know i have a lot of guys saying well i put out mineral in september okay that helps but it's like taking a multivitamin for 31 days out of the year <laughs> I mean, it will benefit you, but only to a very limited extent. They really need it year round, and if, if or well, whatever your game laws are, if you, yeah. you know certain states can feed, you know, no problem. Uh, but if you if you have the capability to put something on the ground to help these deer out, you know, for whatever months out of the year you can, you should. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. John, you have any more antler questions? <laughs> Big bone questions. Um, I'm sure I can come up with some. Do it. I, I am pretty. Uh, intrigued about the process because i i haven't been a big feeder i don't have um i've got uh maybe 400 acres that i concentrate on mm -hmm. but um i would have to walk um probably 300 yards to any spot that i would feed so i am intrigued with some of the 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 mineral that i can pack in and, and do something on the ground rather than a, a gravity feeder but um, i just haven't found anything that just trips my trigger that's actually really uh worked well um so blake's really um kind of been the driving force in me starting this program mm -hmm. and so uh for for people out there listening um just just from start to scratch what would you recommend you know for a guy like me that you know isn't gonna probably have a feeder anywhere what would be the best plan of attack what would he get from you guys and then what would he get from the store to uh to get started okay um on that on that side if you and we do have you know that's another question we get quite often guys that will have land access but because the trees are so thick or they're you know that whatever you know entry rights they have onto the property or maybe they don't you know don't have a side by side or a four by four or whatever they have to kind of hoof it in it limits you because you know then you're you know nobody enjoys putting 50 pound sack of feet on their back and carrying it for you know several hundred yards through the woods you know mm -hmm. and so it does limit you um but obviously your your easy go-to in that situation is just you know putting the mineral to them hard you know and uh and what guys in our uh er, in our experience have done that they will actually run our mineral or another mineral with the mineral booster in it and just really super concentrate it and keep it to them in high doses yeah you know, do you have a, a mixture for that like if i'm running 50 pounds of mineral yeah how yeah, much have. mineral booster do i need if you're going to run 50 pound mineral you just need one packet you know okay. one packet of booster it'll treat the entire 50 pounds okay and, and then uh, that pack every time i run mm -hmm. another 50 pounds yep you okay. just add that one packet to it and um you can do it right there on the ground the way i use it um to be honest with you i've had a lot of success is i'll we sell the mineral in 100 pound 25 pound and eight pound bags and the reason we went with the eight pound bag is it it was we we tested different size you know to show you what a number guy i am we actually worked up bags everything from five to 15 pounds and then i gave them out to hunters and told them to take it out in the field and come back to me and tell me which one was the best application size and and i mean from everything from did it cover enough you know did it put enough material on the ground did it last long enough was it easy to carry was it too heavy was it inconvenient you know and everyone came back they loved this eight pound size because it was lasting you know 
two, three, four months. It was easy to carry into the field, bags resealable. You know, they, they just kind of flip for that one. So what I do is I carry one eight pound bag of our mineral for every application site that I'm going to use. And I went to the dollar store and bought a little hand rake and broke the handle off short and put a like bicycle grip on it. And I just throw it in my backpack and I go out in the field and I just rake a little three by three area on the ground, pour the entire eight pound bag on the ground, just kind of rake a little dirt into it, set a camera and then come back you know, every so often to check it. And as the year goes on, they just dig a swimming pool. And, uh, and that's the other thing. I get pictures from guys sending us pictures of their mineral beds and, I mean, they got, you know, pictures of deer laying in the mineral bed with just their head sticking out, you know. Yeah, and I've seen some of Blake's yeah, pictures. And yeah. so yeah. they just tear it up. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the other, the flip side of our planning progress for, or process for our mineral. You know, a high sodium concentrate uh, mineral is going to melt into the dirt. Uh, and a lower sodium concentrate mineral is not going to melt away as readily. And so you're going to, the nutrition will stay up on the surface for longer that way. I got you. And, uh, and so we have, I mean, guys that literally just tear it apart and uh and we have guys in louisiana that use a lot of it uh because our for whatever reason our mineral is not super attractive to pigs and they have a wild hog problem down there and so other minerals they had that had you know sugary attractant type stuff in it the pigs were in it like crazy and the deer weren't and so they were buying tons of our stuff down there because the pigs don't particularly pay a lot of attention to it so and uh, go sorry, no go no go i was just gonna wanted to touch back on john's question so like in his case how often should he be doing that like is it once a month or every is it just visual should stop in and check on that site yeah it's going to depend on what your browse rate is i mean what your what your deer holding rate is i mean what your population density is um you know i i'm i'm hearing from the field that people are having to reload their mineral sites in that two to two to four month range you know it's, it's lasting them that long um and a lot of it, you know, some guys, you know, depending on which nutritionist you talk to, they, they recommend, you know, one mineral site for every five acres or, you know, but it varies. Um, I don't think you can put enough mineral down. I'll be honest with you. I, you know, you're never going to over mineral your deer, you know, and, uh, and it benefits everybody at every stage. I mean, the bucks can eat it, the does can eat it, the fawns can eat it, you know, and, uh, so I think at, at that point, if I had to carry a lot of product in and I had one option, then I would just use mineral I I as, as much as I could, uh, a real high concentration of mineral. Um, and then we have a couple of new products that we're actually testing now that we're going to be bringing into development, hopefully next season, uh, that are going to address that. It's, it's going to be, uh, we're, we're looking at developing uh, a cube uh, that will actually be a, a probiotic growth promoting cube that you can go put out and have them you know browse on uh, and so we're we're developing that and testing that now uh and to see if that would you know help address situations like that nice okay did i hear you say that salty more salt that's in a mineral it sinks into the the it, dirt, well, we, yeah, the water mixed. So that's it. probably why the digging yeah, happens. That's interesting to me. Yeah. I just because yeah. yeah. you know I saw yeah you like deer do dig oh, yeah. you put yeah. salt down big time, but it's not necessarily maybe that they're going after the mineral as much as that's what they have to do yeah, to get to it because it dissolves that much so harder. It's yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just trying to get to it. That's inter I never knew yeah. that. Yeah. And, and the, some of the other mineral components will too, but salt yeah. you know d dissolves so readily right. uh, that it will leach a lot of it into the into the soil. Hmm. Yeah, it is interesting. So, John's gonna be hooked on the mineral now. <laughs> I mean, mineral I've, man. I've got a couple spots that uh, that I can feed, and, and I have. Um, so, um, it just all comes down to uh, how much do I really want to pack in those fifty pound bags of sure. feed? Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, I think I will. Um, I I had a late start this year, um, but I, I fully intend um, probably starting i'd say in december um actually no i want to hunt there it's got to be january, <laughs> january. 15th <laughs> yep. that's an, that's the other thing just with missouri rules i right. mean you're, you're kind of tied sometimes but uh i do want to see you know a full season how this works for a guy that hasn't really fed um religiously i know blake he's He's gung ho on every farm he's got. He he, uh, <laughs> so he feeds. He even hunts I, over it all year long. Yeah, right. Thanks. So. No. no. <laughs> uh, the funny thing is, this is the kind of how this correlation happened. Is that shock effect was the reason I started feeding on my farms. Oh, okay. Years ago, when I talked to Steve, probably three or four years ago. Right. I know a lot of guys who fed. I never had a feeder. I never messed with it because I couldn't ever. I had in my content in my brain 
that I couldn't pattern a deer because I had to shut my feet off 10 days before I could hunt him anyway, so it really didn't do me any good. I wasn't in the management standpoint of things, you know. So yeah. over those years, I, you know, I got with Steve and got some and tried it and got the mineral, and then I fed it hard. I did it just like he said. For I got one feeder, put that feeder out, gravity feeder, fed it all through the winter, um, all through the summer growth months, shut it off in September, September 1st, and I had the best year that farm has ever had. You know, I'd had that farm for three years prior, and a lot of the deer that were on it were deer I knew, you know, the whole time and followed the whole time. And I always, my, my success story for Shock Effect, I guess, is that I had a deer that was, when I got the farm, he was three and he was six on the final year he got killed. And he was about 115 inches as a clean eight, no kickers, um, when he was three. When he was four, he was probably 120 inches. Same frame, easy as heck to follow. He had one brow that curled, mm -hmm. and we came, named him Curly, and he was always <laughs> just a big eight. And he, right. he did it for those three years, and that year I fed him, he literally went from, he was a five-year-old, 100 probably 28 inch eight pointer and when i fed him all through the year and with the mineral and stuff he went to he was a six my neighbor killed him i didn't have enough i guess to keep him over there but <laughs> uh my neighbor ended up killing him and he was like 158 inch nine pointer and he had five different three inch kickers off the front of his brows oh, yeah. it was unbelievable he still kept his curl you know his curly brow mm -hmm. but it was like the deer had never had a G4 in his life, right? And he threw a five and a half inch one. Yeah. Like, unbelievable. And he threw almost 30 inches from five to six. This deer had never even shown a kicker all the way to five. And that's really kind of toward the tail end of their prime Absolutely. growing age yeah. anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, with that, and then also I want to step back to, we talked about darker racks. And you're mm -hmm. talking darker racks in velvet, right? Or you're talking uh, darker racks out of velvet hard, too. Hard, really? Darker. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I know in velvet, that was the really the eye-opener for me that time of year. Yeah. yeah. His rack went black. His velvet rack, I, had co I was running covert illuminator cameras, so they were flash cameras. And literally his velvet went jet black through that process. And I called Steve because I'm like, Dude, this deer's got like black horns. He's like, oh, that's normal. That's yeah. just showing you that's working. We get that call blood. a lot. I get guys panicking, going, oh my God, what have I done to my deer? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? He goes, he sends me a picture. What's wrong with him? I said, that's normal. You know? And after they take a few deep breaths, he's like, you sure? I said, well, <laughs> trust me, it's going to be great. You know? Yeah. And uh, in fact, a guy uh, uh, called me a couple days ago and he uh, showed me uh, first trail cam photos of his deer that have just all got all their velvet off. And, uh, and he's just, I mean, super pumped because they've got that nice, rich dark color to mm -hmm. them and they're far bigger than they were last year and so I mean, he like i said it sells itself on that but uh but that's I, I always focus on the dark antler deal because that's it's just an easy key to see that it's working yeah you know? and it's a visual reminder that you, you know what you're putting in them is, is is actually taking effect yeah that was really the eye-opener for me i mean i fed it just with whole corn like i didn't mm -hmm. you know i didn't have a pellet i didn't feed it with you know now we feed it with big time because I, I love the big time just the matchup with what it does and what it provides with putting that pellet into it too but um yeah then it was just straight corn like it was unbelievable and then after that i, w I got like mad scientists <laughs> on it you know so i'm like crack corn and, and soybean mill and trying to do different things with them and it uh it really was an eye-opening experience for me i know running it through there and something oh, yeah. that i think guys if they give it a fair shake will i mean there's there's nobody else out there that has it you guys are kind of a sleeper really i mean you made your name and, and been in the game for I mean, every time I talk, every time I talk about it, they're like, "It's a new company." Yeah, yeah. No, it's not a new yeah. company. It's been around forever in the high fence game. Just now, they're coming over into the free range stuff. And man, guys, I, you gotta get the world. Should it be illegal? That's what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I get I get asked that a lot too. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that, well, what's in it? You know, like, like and it's and that's one thing I have to tell everybody. It's it you know you're not you're not juicing up your deer. You're not doing anything that shouldn't be doing. It's all natural. There's no hormones. There's no steroids. There's no stimulants. It's it's all just nutritional development that's all right. it is you know it is just it is just better feeding and uh and it, it's as simple as that and i know it sounds really complicated but it it's really not and uh we have a bunch of information it's it's prime you know we're in the process of beta testing our new website that's dedicated strictly to the wild deer side but if you go to our website it's www.shockeffectwhitetail.com and uh there's a lot of uh, knowledge center information on there that talk about how deer grow the way they do and why the products work and it's kind of pitched at a higher angle for you know for folks like deer farmers that that have a lot of nutritional science information but it it's still a good read if people want to know a little bit more about about how it works and why it works and and then uh you know obviously you can contact me at any time and i can kind of walk them through the process on on applying it to their individual one-off 
you know, land management or hunting situation. Right. Yeah, I mean, you guys made your name in an industry where your results are measured how many times a year? At well, least, that, at least re- return on investment is the name of the game. And <laughs> hunting, you know, these guys get paid by the inch on both sides. The, the deer, like if you're a deer producer and you bring me a deer, I'm going to pay by the inch. You know, 250, 265, whatever, I'm going to pay by the inch. And then when I sell that deer at our hunting preserve, that hunter is going to pay by the inch. And right. so it is all return on investment. Yeah. And uh, so if it's worked for over a decade for guys that actually break out the tech measure, then uh, it definitely works on the wild side. Absolutely, so. yeah. Yeah, man, it's amazing. So, uh, real quick, I know you said product of choice. If I'm starting out, like John mentioned earlier, is mineral. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm, let's say we're going to dedicate four sites right away on this property, do we go in and just kind of blast those four sites kind of hard to get it established, or what's your recommendation on that for somebody? They talk about just strictly mineral. Yes. Yeah, I would just go ahead and blast. You know, hit hit it hard and and just keep it to them. And it's really not complicated. You know, get you know, go ahead and do a you know, like an eight-pound uh, dose on each feed site, you know, maybe one every three, four, five acres, you know, and spread it out. Uh, and, you know, choosing the placement's important. You know, look where you have your water source and things like that, you know. Um, and you just do – and there's a lot of articles online on how to choose your mineral placement sites. But I would I would hit it hard, and, and the, the trick with deer farming – I mean, the trick with growing deer is consistency. You know, you can't start off strong in February, March, or April, and then lose interest in it, and and you know, in June, July, and August, and then expect to get results. You know, you got to to keep it in them and, and keep it on them. You know, the the, the whole growth cycle. But on the schedule, mineral side, it's schedule, easy. Schedule. Yeah, but on the mineral side, it's it's really easy. Just keep it down year round if you can, and if you can't, you know, just know to pull it up in accordance with your game laws. But I mean, really, the day that it's legal to put it on the ground, do it because they they will be eating it and they will be needing it. For sure. So. Um how do we stop our neighbors from shooting our deer? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to actually be honest with you, though, we, we, the guys do ask that question it kind of as a joke. But, you know, when, if you take, for instance, a, a property that was managed the way Blake did, and, you know, he would just, you know, go in and, and just hunt and, and wasn't, didn't really have a real presence or a program or a management style during the non-hunting, you know, months, um, you know, deer – migrate in and migrate out and you really don't know what you got or why or how but once you develop a feeding program and you you monitor your deer you actually develop a culture for these deer these deer know that they have a consistent quality food source they don't know why but they know you know they they know a good quality food source when they find one and they will hit that and hit that and hit that and then they will tend to stay and tend tend to hold on your property better than if you didn't offer them anything and I'm not guaranteeing they're not going to wander off on the right time and, sure. and get, you know, popped by your neighbor. But it increases the likelihood that you're not only going to have bigger, healthier deer, but that you're going to see them more often just yeah. because they're going to stay. And, in, and we get, you know, stories all the time from guys that, you know, put out the cameras. And once they establish that feeding program, you know, the first year, or maybe into the second year, they start seeing deer they've never even seen before. You know, so, sure. they're, so you're bringing more folks into your, onto your, you know, your piece mm-hmm. as well. You guys, you got anything else? don't i think uh we covered it pretty good i, I think i think it's going to be one of those podcasts people are going to have to go back and listen to about three times <laughs> <Yeah, right? laughs> jot down all these notes but um jack let everybody know where they can kind of find you or um, the products and yep. website and all that good yes stuff. www.shockeffectwhitetail no s just whitetail.com uh, or you can give me a call on my cell phone which is on the website or you can get me my email address which is j demos d-e-m-o-s-s at shockeffectwhitetail.com and i'll be happy to to send them any literature they need or answer any questions or i mean i enjoy job owner about it on the phone too so if they have a question be feel free to give me a shout and the time to really think about it is now you know don't don't you know don't try to cram in march or april you know it's better to start thinking about it now where you can go to your property and analyze you know what you think you're going to need where you're going to put your feeders how you're going to feed them how you're going to maintain them where you're going to put your cameras you know that kind of stuff just do some homework during the off season and that way when it comes time to to get this going you can hit the ground running yeah absolutely well it's exciting stuff it's a lot of information and uh it's kind of neat to be able to just learn stuff and it just uh, ultimately makes us better you know stewards of land and, and better hunters so i hope everybody enjoys this episode we put out today absolutely. yeah so well, thank you guys thanks jack thank you for having me yeah absolutely <laughs>